everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Ebony and in today's video, I'm going to be giving another update on my breast lift journey series. It's actually gonna be the final update on it. Um, I'm gonna be answering some of your frequently asked questions that I received in the comments. And I'm also just gonna be giving some tips and tricks on how to heal properly and what not to do, okay? So if you're interested in that, then please keep watching. I swear, you guys, it's like me trying to make this video is I keep running into problems. First of all, I filmed this entire video and then there was no sound. Now my autofocus is tripping, but I don't have time to mess with the settings. So I'm just going to try to be really still and keep recording this because I'm not doing this over again. Okay, so the number one question that I get in my comments is regarding nipple sensitivity. Did I lose it? Has it come back if I did lose it? And I totally get this question because I was concerned about this too when I was researching this procedure. The answer is yes, I did lose nipple sensitivity initially, but as time progressed and the months went on, it slowly but surely started coming back. Um, but I am a part of that group of women who has the sensitivity and I can get to the big O just by the stimulation there alone. So if you're a part of that group, I'm totally with you and I know why you would be concerned about losing that because you don't want to lose that. In my experience, I did lose it initially and like I said, um, as time progressed, it started to come back and I say I have about 85 to 90% of it back now. So I'm still pretty sensitive and I can still get there. The next question that I get often is about cup size. Um, so I went from a double D to a D, and I would say that it's up to you to determine how small you want your breast to be. Um, you could be getting a reduction with a lift. You could be wanting to keep the same size, and that's what I did. I kept the same size that I had. My surgeon actually offered me that option, so I took it. I would say plan on losing one cup size anyway because uh, when you get the lift, it will be, your breast will be more firm, so you will lose up to one cup size anyway. So another frequently asked question that I get is do I have any regrets? And I used to say no, that I don't have any regrets, but I actually do have two. The first one would be that I didn't really take my scar care seriously initially. And it's crazy because once I came out of surgery, you know how you could just tell that you're going to heal well? Like with any type of cut or scar that you get, you're like, oh, that's going to be a bad one or oh, that's going to go away. Like those were my scars. My scars were good. They were light. You know, I had scabbing that once the scabbing came off they were almost blending into my skin so therefore i didn't really take it too seriously on trying to heal them further because i was just like oh they're gonna heal so good on their own and that was a big mistake because i was going out in the sun i was getting hyperpigmentation and i just wish that i would have taken my regimen taken my regimen more seriously so that's one regret my other regret is not asking about the size of my areolas. So I just went with what my surgeon suggested and I agreed that it did look good, but I wish that I would have asked if it would affect the way that the lift looks if I had gotten my areolas larger. Um, it's funny because growing up, I had large areolas in comparison to like the women that you see naked on the movies or whatever you're watching. Um, for instance, like Holly Berry and Swordfish and she had those like perfect little, perfectly circle nipples and mine were never really like the perfect circle or really small. Um, they were kind of big and you know, they were just pigment. So, um... I was looking forward to having a more normal looking areola and I was excited about that. Now that I have that, now I'm kind of missing a bigger areola. I think it's sexier. I think that there's more to look at. So yeah, I'm curious what if, if it's possible to get a bigger areola size and then that way you can minimize the amount of space left on the rest of your breast for a scar, but also still kind of have a medium 
to larger sized areola if that's something that you're interested in. I personally now think it might be a little sexier, but hey, I'm still good with what I have. I'm not, not complaining. So yeah, those are really the only two regrets that I have about this. Um, I'm still really satisfied with my results and those are the only regrets. Let's move on to some tips and tricks that I have for you guys. Tip number one, if you can, please schedule your surgery to the point where you're going to be healing in the winter time. I highly stress this. You do not want to be healing when it's blazing hot outside. I live in Los Angeles. I went to have my surgery in Las Vegas, both pretty hot places. And I got my surgery in September. So I was kind of wilding out after I was feeling better, like because it was still hot outside. We could still, I was still getting invited places and I still wanted to just be out and at the beach. And I definitely made myself have hyperpigmentation, I believe, by being in the sun, not having sunscreen on, not um, having layers on, and just exposing the new scars to the sunlight and risking hyperpigmentation. So if there's any tip that I can give you, it is to heal in the winter time, okay? I know that this might be known already, but I didn't know it. So especially if you're a black woman or a woman of color and you may be prone to hyperpigmentation, please, the sun is not your friend in this healing process. I'm sorry, it's just not. So I would suggest staying in if you can't heal during the winter try to stay in a little bit longer than you normally would maybe a week or two um or when you do go out layers or sunscreen research the sunscreen that you're putting on your body of course but sunscreen layers just try to avoid putting too much sunlight on that brand new scar is my first tip another tip that i have is to avoid putting super hot water on your scars and I would say to avoid doing this for at least the first three to four months I usually would shower and put the hot water like all over my body just like let it run especially right on my breast especially after they kind of already had scabbed up and the scabs fell off like this caused my scar to respond to that hot water in a weird way um, and I just noticed that over time my scars went from being kind of like whiter to red and then to getting too dark and i noticed when i wasn't putting the hot water on it they kind of remained the same um, color and the same kind of color scheme as my skin so i would avoid taking the hot showers and having the the water hit directly on your breast maybe turn around and have it the water hit from your back or um, cover your breasts a little bit while you're in the shower. That's what I would suggest or um, take baths. Another question that I get is about the pain level. I did a whole series about this journey and I actually have some vlog footage of me right after I left the surgery and I explained what my pain level was and all that so I'll place that link to that video in the comment i mean in the description box or somewhere up here for you to go look at it um but i'll just sum it up right now that the pain is pretty moderate i would say the pain is pretty moderate from like a seven to an eight um but you do get pain medication and that um helps improve the pain significantly so i wouldn't worry too much about the pain level another question i get is about intimacy after while you're healing I'm married and my husband obviously knew that I was going to get this procedure and he definitely um, respected my decision as your partner should respect your decision. And he loves me no less with scars, without scars. Um, and he's been with me on this journey, like helping me heal, helping me recover. But if you're feeling insecure about it or maybe if you have a new partner, if you're single and you don't know how someone's gonna react, Definitely wait until you're healed and you're not scabbing up maybe before you get intimate with someone. But, you know, once you are healed and you have the scarring left over, I mean, maybe just 
just see what happens. If you're feeling so insecure about it, there's always like cute lace bras you can wear in the meantime while you're healing your scars that are still kind of see-through. Or if you want to put some self-tanner or, um, you know, some something like that with the powder so it doesn't rub off on the sheets. <laughs> I don't know, but I think the best way to go about it is to just go for it, be honest, um, and if that person cares about you, then they shouldn't really care about um, any little line that you have on your breast. Another tip that I have, and this one is so, so important, is to continue to wear a bra. Now, I know that we're getting this procedure done because we wanna be hot girls. We don't wanna have to wear a bra with everything, but I'm telling you, especially in the beginning, please wear your bra around the clock. Gravity does not spare anyone, so make sure you're wearing that bra around the clock. If you have somewhere to go and you want to wear that shirt that has that deep V or whatever, by all means, go ahead. This is what you paid for. But you also want to preserve what you paid for, right? So keep wearing a bra. Definitely strap up. I mean, I wear two bras when I'm going for a run because I'm not about to have these things bouncing up and down and, and um, having gravity pull on them while I'm working out. Take care of your investment. This is an investment. This is very expensive stuff. It's not cheap. So take care of your investment and continue to wear a bra. Okay. Quick story time. I felt really comfortable with my lift. I was, you know, it looked perfect. I was bare, like I, maybe I had like one or two little scabs on them, but my scarring was perfect and everything. I was in back in Vegas again, just for like a checkup or something like that. And it was my husband's birthday and I had this low cut V shirt on. Uh, maybe I'll post like a little clip up here. And I went without a bra. Um, and I swear, towards the end of the night, I could feel the heaviness. And I was like, oh shoot, this is like, this is a familiar feeling. And I didn't like that heaviness, that pull of gravity. And I kind of wished that I, I, wished that I had worn a bra that day, especially so soon after the surgery. Um, I would suggest going braless for events that you don't have to be at all day, unless you have a little bit of a compression if, if it's a tight top then by all means go ahead but you know i'm talking about those like looser v tops that just are your breasts are just naturally sitting the way that they want to sit i would suggest not doing that as an all day thing because i definitely felt the heaviness after that day and i feel like i might have done a little bit of damage too soon another weird fact or fun fact about this is that you might have a change in the color of your areolas because my areolas were like a light brown color and now I'd say they're more on the and then when I got stimulated they would kind of um, turn darker brown and but now they're just at that stage of dark brown like they're not light brown anymore and I kind of and I kind of do miss that but um, note that so another thing I get asked about a lot is about revisions and complications and things like that. Please do your research on all the complications that could possibly happen. If you have pre-existing conditions or anything like that, please do your research before getting this procedure. Ask your surgeon. Um, and then just cosmetically, there can be things that you're not satisfied with. Please look for a surgeon who has performed this procedure on someone with your skin color. Um, maybe someone of your same ethnic background so that you know that so that you know a little bit about what your results might look like. When I was doing my research on my surgeon, I was satisfied with the work that I seen him do on women with my same color. To be 100% honest and real with you guys, I did do a video about my scar revision surgery. And I ended up getting that because there was some areola trapped underneath my incision, my lollipop incision. And I had to, I mean, and I wanted to get that revised. So the topical treatments weren't really doing what I expected them to do in that case. So my surgeon did recommend that I get a scar excision surgery. And I posted all about what that is and the process that that, and the process and the results and everything I posted that in some of my last videos but I 
did have to get another one, you guys. So yes, two scar revision surgeries. Um, the second one was totally up to me. I just felt like I could do better or we could get more of that darkness out than we did the first time. So I could have just left it as is, but I just wanted to see if we could try again. Um, both of these were complimentary to me, so that's why I ended up getting them. Um, and I will say that the second time around, we got way more of that dark pigment out. So that was done at the end of October, early November, so we're about three months post that um, second revision. So I will show you guys um, the difference between the top half of my scar and the bottom half of my scars um, because the bottom half is blending in a lot more with my skin since it's been over a little bit over two years for those and then the top half is still fairly new so those are still healing and I'll I can keep you guys updated on that. I, this is going to be my last longer form video on this topic but I'm not opposed to doing um, short form videos, reels, or YouTube shorts um, that I'll post my, that I can post my results on just to keep you guys in the loop and updated on that. Um, so I'll let you guys know uh, whenever I update my real self profile or I'll just post a short video on what my results look like now. Another thing I wanted to talk about is getting the breast lift without implants. So what this means is that you're not going to have that upper pole fullness. You're not going to have like those circle, circle, perfect circle boobs that kind of stick together like this or have like that cleavage um, that's super close together, super round. You will have a more naturally sloping breast. Maybe I'll post a photo here. You are going to have a more natural slope to your breast on the top. Personally, I prefer the more natural look, but if you're looking for like maybe like a Carmen Electra or I don't know, I think I, I keep giving really dramatic examples, but if you're looking for more of a roundness up top and that that cleavage, that that ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, then you may want to consider getting the lift with implants. I just didn't want anything foreign in my body permanently or for a lot for at least 10 years, which is what they recommend for the implants. Um, so I didn't go with that route, but I'm not saying that I wouldn't be opposed to getting them in the future. Another thing that I would suggest is researching a surgeon that does internal mesh. So internal mesh is kind of like um, an internal bra. So they put, they do the lift and then they put um, the mesh in there to kind of like tighten up and give you that cleavage. So if you do want that cleavage, I would suggest looking into an internal mesh. It is pretty expensive. Otherwise, I would have considered getting that. Um, I also wasn't sure if I wanted anything foreign put inside of my body. So that kind of weaned me off of it, but then also mostly the price. Um, it is a lot more expensive. I got my uh, lift for $7,000 and the doctor that was talking about the internal mesh, I think it was around 14 or 15. Um, so yeah, if you have the coin, then go ahead and look into that. All right, you guys, I think I pretty much covered everything. This is a bittersweet moment for me because this was kind of, even though I've done YouTube videos in the past and I've always wanted to kind of share things and that will be helpful for people. This has been like a really, great experience talking about this and like seeing how many other people can relate to me and how many other people are interested so i'm just really happy that i documented my journey throughout this whole thing and i'm just so 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 excited to move on to the next thing that i'm obsessed with which is self-development and self-improvement and basically just upgrading our lives leveling up um all of those things leveling up financially getting our bodies tight and right our looks together our wardrobe together getting more money getting out of debt like all of that just self-improvement and that is those are the videos that i love to watch i just put them on in the background while i'm doing whatever like i'm taking a bath I wake up and I feel inspired by those videos. I'm a Capricorn, I'm very ambitious. So this is my passion and I can't wait to start talking about it. So 
Thank you guys so much for watching these videos. Like I said, I'll still keep you updated. We'll still talk about this. If you find any of my videos helpful and you want to see more content from me, then please give me a like and a comment and you just say hi in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.